and he's included in the squad. He 12 goals for Swansea this season. What do you think he's going to add? Yeah, I've been to Swansea a few times, obviously, because we have Michael Femi there and Cyrus Christie and Ryan Manning um, playing together. And it's the first time in his career, Michael, that he's had consecutive, a run of consecutive games. And it's very hard for, for young players in the Premier League to get that. Uh, just the standards are so high and squads are so big. So they moved to Swansea, which is a great club and a great platform to really do well in in the championship. And you can see, you can see really... The improvement in his play. I've seen thing, I've seen him do aspects of his play that I hadn't seen previously with Swansea. His hold of play has really come on well, and he's uh, shown great football intelligence, aligned to the speed that he's he's got, the natural speed he's got. So the performance I've seen recently from Swansea are better than I've ever seen from him. So um, his rate of improvement has been very high, and um, obviously twelve doesn't take penalties, and he scored twelve goals in sixteen games. So he's done very well. And what's your relationship like with him? Oh, Michael's right. Yeah, I've, 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 I've had a few meetings with Michael. And, uh, you know, listen, if, every, if everyone was the same, life would be dull. Michael's a charismatic guy, and he's, you know, he's, he's uh, you know, but he, I know he, he's very proud to play for Ireland, and uh, he, he's excited about uh, coming in, and he's speaking about family coming to, to Ireland for the games and so forth. So he's, he's looking forward to it. And is it a concern that Irish players' involvement in the Premier League this season has fallen um, for a record low in terms of minutes on the pitch? Um, yeah, that's a big question, you know, overall. But I think we just got to concentrate on, on the players that we've got and myself as manager. Now. Um, you know, we've had a sort of radical overhaul of players over the last year. And we've, we've got a strong squad now. And I think we've been missing some really good players. Matt Doherty is one of our best players over the last year and a half for sure um, is missing and Adam Ida who really was coming into his own at Norwich and Andrew Amabamadeli who's been exceptional for us um, they're, they're, they're out of the squad they're not available but yet we still have a lot of options and uh, that's that's, um, that's what we're going to need everyone with four games in ten days um, and two, two, two travels one to Armenia seven hours the time difference and to get ready for that game, come back and play the two games, and then go to uh, go to Poland. So it's a um, big challenge for us. Gavin, hey, Sam. Uh, you're saying it's about CJ Hamilton. Is it a case of him contacting you to say he was eligible for Ireland? No, no, not not no. quite. No, but obviously he he, uh, he was someone that I had little information on. You know, to be honest. You know, I know he played his first 14 years, or he lived his first 14 years in Waterford, played in the Kennedy Cup for Waterford, but then he, he went to England and he can't really, do, you know, the road less travelled to come to, to the, the conference in England for a few years, a couple of years, and up through League Two and League One and into the Championship, and it's a very interesting journey. And obviously, he, he's a very, very quick uh, left winger, a lot of pace, he plays on the right as well. And um, we can play on either wing for Blackpool, and he has a very good attitude, and he's made a good contribution. And he's had to contend with some injuries over the last year. He broke his metatarsal, which kept him out for the start of the season, and then it didn't heal properly. So he had to contend with that. And uh, but in the second half of the season, he uh, made a good, a good impact for for, for, for Blackpool. And this is the first one that he was ever eligible for in terms of. It is, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Best you have a set is called up as well. I mean, do you see him as right wing back? Not no, I, I, re I really see him as a right winger. Uh, I think, in, in my opinion, at the moment, I see him as, uh, as a right winger, but I think he's someone who can play right wing back. And that was a factor in the selection as well. I think we, we need, because Seamus Coleman missed the game against Arsenal last weekend with uh, a groin issue. And, uh, you know, so we just have to make sure that we're covered in that area. But, yeah, so it's Christie, obviously, and we've other players who can play there, and, and Festy is another player who gives an attacking option. I don't see him really as a defender, but wing-back isn't necessarily a defensive position, depending on who you're playing and, and what, your, what your tasks are within that game. Uh, he, he can come from deep and be effective uh, as a wing-back. Um, so he, um, but he, he, not every game he's played has been perfect. He's still learning. 
and um, uh, but his speed really frightens defenders. And I, I see that I see the game in these games with the pitch being big in these games. Like I think against Ukraine and Scotland, no one's going to sit in, and I think the games will be really stretched and speed will be important. And even Armenia are not seem to sit in at all. They 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 quite an attack and set up the way they play, and um, so I don't see uh, any of the games really with a low block mm -hmm. and such. You know, so I think it's it's uh, the games will be stretched and and uh, open. And just lastly, is Seamus a doubt for Armenia? Hey? No, no, he'll be okay. He'll be okay. Thanks, man. Any further questions in the live section? Uh, Stephen just talking about uh, Michael's improvement over the last few months. It's not something that Aaron Connolly. Um, where is he sort of taking more? Yeah, Ireland, Ireland, uh, Ireland, you know, is not in the squad, of course, and he, he doesn't feel right himself. He feels um, the heel that he's, he's been playing with and getting injections with towards the end of the season to play, that it's caused him a lot of discomfort. And so he wasn't available for selection. Um, but I think, obviously, he's had a, a long period. I think players... When you talk to some some people in England when you're going around the clubs and a lot of the coaches, they say they often say disregard a player's force loan. You know, that's the saying that they sort of have that I said, How do you mean? They say most force loans are not always successful. And he, he played a lot of games for Middlesbrough and that was good experience from I'm sure if he has another loan move, he'll be better for it. How many do you expect he probably will get fresh loan up then next season? Yeah, I've 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 no knowledge of that, but it's you know you, you would suspect that would be the case. Uh, just as well, we're going to ask um, the speculation that John used like the Watford job. Is there any genuine concern that you might have to throw a new coach there? It wasn't really a concern. No, you know that you know that it didn't materialise. So it wasn't it wasn't a factor. Sean, sure. this window would be your longest with squad since the Spain camp last week. I know there's a few travel days involved, but how valuable is that extended period for the side? Yeah, it, it is. It's it's a, an 18 day camp, and um, we're viewing it like a tournament, you know. And it is. And sometimes, if you go to a tournament, the max a lot of countries will play is four games. So unless teams really progress, and um, it's uh, you know we have to view it like that, and we have to prepare it accordingly. It's different. Some of the players finished four weeks ago. Some finished three weeks ago. And some finished this week. So you know, Damien Doyle has sent out. Even to all the players and a lot of the players on standby, heart rate monitor or sorry, not heart rate, you know, GPS units, um, to uh, so that the players have been wherever they've been, they've had to log their their stuff every day, and um, to make sure they're ready to come in, uh, ready to go, and we have a record of every everything that everyone has done, and uh, we have to because it is a challenge. You don't play for four weeks, that becomes six weeks again. The matches, is, is and then you know how do you get up to speed? So it is, a, it is a challenge for some players. Obviously, Nathan and Shane has just finished last week. And um, so we, we have to sort of modify and look at everyone on an individual basis to, to try and maximise um, their physical capacity. Um, Steve, just switching to the squad, a lot of strikers coming in have had a good season, Chelsea and um, MP get the money for. I feel like, first of all, Josh Holden is the first game, is that? That's yeah, game. yeah. So would, would that be feel be concerned just with? Connor, Jeff, not playing as much football as they like. Just the midfielders haven't had a great year. I'm almost concerned. Uh, the um, it just shows you like Connor Hurlan, his attitude, for example, like, he's always like the maximum amount of his body. Like he's not naturally as athletic as Alan Brown, as Jeff Hendrick, as Josh Cullen. You know, he just wasn't born with that physical capacity that they have, but he maxes everything that out of his body. It's such an incredible problem. When he got knocked out of the playoffs, he rang me the next morning and said he wasn't due to some players are coming in Sunday, the Premier League players are, are the Sheffield lads because they need a little bit of a break. The other players are coming in on Saturday morning to for an in-house game Sunday and and, um, and the training Saturday. And um, Connor wanted to come in early. He didn't want to report. He wanted to come in early to, for the extra training for, for the game, yeah, the in-house game. wanted to play in that. Uh, Jeff, you know, they've been, they've been monitoring all their sessions. He's played a, a good bit with with QPR, maybe not enough 
that we ideally where we'd want. The Connors made some good shit contributes to Sheffield United as well. He was in and out, but he did he did play. So um so yeah, Jason Malumbi got back in the team at West Brom and played played a lot of games this year as well. And and Alan Brown of course has been playing a lot of games for his captain of Preston and, and doing well. And I say Josh missed the fourth game but he was there for the other, the other three. Um so you know we generally only play two in that in those positions, you know, so that's that's it. Good. Uh, Stephen, uh, you say you're treating it as a tournament, the uh, four games in 18 days. What would be a good tournament? You know, I think, you know, most people would, in the, most people, neutral observers would view us as toward favourites, probably behind Ukraine and Scotland. And probably ahead of Armenia, um, and that's that's probably a fair assessment. But for us, we, we would love to win the group. That would be our ambition to try and win the group. And uh, we know that if we could achieve that, we know that it would give us a second season in the European Championship draw, and we know that it would, it would get us promoted into the A League of the Nations League, which is the real top table, which every country would want to aspire to be, where every country would want to aspire to be. So. It's, and I think all the teams are take, capable of taking points off each other, um, and so it's it's uh, it's a bit it's a, you know we want to we want to absolutely get the, try and fulfil our potential over the over the six games between the four games in June and, and the two in and the two in September. Just on the point, do you feel in some ways you know the situation with Ukraine is is, is awful. You know, you know it's, it's gone football is terrible, but their preparations can't have been. Yeah, I, d I don't really look at it like that. I think, to be honest, I think uh, you're right about Ukraine. Um, it is a, you know, it's a tragedy. You know, Russia's invaded Ukraine. It's a it's a war. The game was supposed to be in Kiev. It was supposed to be then moved to Lviv, and now it's moved to Poland. And the fact that it's happening at all is a miracle. And the games the, the, themselves, the home game, in 50 years' time, will be a significant game, a game in Irish football history, because Russia has invaded. Thousands have died in Ukraine. Thousands more will die. And uh, I think it's uh, um, President Zelensky has made the decision to let. You know, we, we've seen a situation where Ukrainian people from Ireland have gone into the Ukraine to defend their nation and have died. You know, we've seen that situation. So President Zelensky has decided to let the Ukraine national team represent the country at this time. And I think he's right, because it, you can get, people can get fatigued and forget it, switch off the war. But Ukraine playing highlights that, because if anything from history, we, we've learned that. When one country invades another, it doesn't stop there. And, and Russia are not, are not just talking about invading Ukraine. They're talking about invading other countries. So I think this, this game is a significant game in, in modern history. The Ukraine game with, with Scotland and the Ukraine game with Ireland. And certainly for us as a nation, it is a significant game in our history, in our football history. John Fallon? Hey, Stephen. Um, Back to probably more mundane matters, uh, selection. Just like our goalkeepers, um, we know how well Gavin has done, but the fact that Queen have played the last two, does that give him a bit more chance of being a number one? And, and, and of course, Mark has had an outstanding season, and it, it, is a, it is a dilemma, and one that we have to consider, and it's genuine competition there, and they're the sort of headaches that we want, you know, and um, um, so the, tr the three keepers have done brilliantly. Gavin was really exceptional in the campaign, like really exceptional. Quivian obviously has come in and played at Liverpool at that level. And uh, and Mark has just played the team that's got promoted to the Premier League every week. So it is it is these are um <laughs> these are the good dilemmas, but uh, not easy selections, I must I must confess, and um, it's something that obviously I can't really elaborate on now because we haven't even gone into camp and you know obviously it's it's something that we have to consider later later in time. And just on that, is rotation a possibility given the four games? Again, this is something that we'll have to look at. 
it would be unusual to have rotation in. in uh, we can't rule it out. We can't rule it out, but yeah, that would be unusual. You know, I think. Yeah. So I'm not going to say there definitely will be. Just a final one for me. Uh, you mentioned about the improvement of Michael's game, you know, in terms of different aspects of it. But as you know, he has had his attitude questioned by both the manager and Swansea and Southampton. Have you sensed uh, an improvement of that? Did it need to improve in terms of his application, his lifestyle, his all round approach? Um, well, you know, I think um, I think Russell Martin, the Swansea manager, has been very good for him. And I think they have a very good relationship and he has managed to, you know, get the best out of uh, Michael. Uh, at club level, and, uh, and you know, none of us are, none of us are perfect, and I think uh, Michael is 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 different, a bit different, and uh, you know he's learning. He's young, a young player. He's learning all the time himself, and I'm hoping he can make a good contribution in this window. And I know it's a big moment from coming back into the squad, into the squad, and uh, I'm sure he's. Uh, he wants to do well, and after the run of form he's had, we would have prepared that. The run of form was up the last week, and we're taking him in. The three or four week break breaks that up, but it's um, certainly uh, uh, his form has he's, his form has been very good, and uh, I've been to see him a few times, and you know he, he's improved in a lot of aspects of his game but that that I would have seen before. You know, he was always a threat with his pace. Anything over the top, always a trap. He's shown to have a bit of an all-round game for Swansea, and uh, that's that's encouraging. Neil, yeah. Stephen, just on Ukraine, there, there's obviously going to be, you would imagine, a lot of emotional energy for them. Is that something you try to match within your squad, or do you steer away from that? It's about cool heads and being tactically switched on. Or? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's something that we'd have to, you know, because I think. I think at the end of the day we just have to focus on the football really once the match happens and focus on tactical elements of the game and performing well ourselves once the game happens, you know. I think that's that's uh, it'll be you know a, a mental sort of occasion, but we, we do have to uh, we do have to focus on the game itself and, and how we can perform well and because uh, in a sporting context, you know. And just uh, and Stevens um he started your reign in the team. He's had a lot of kind of injuries. I know he came back from the Portsmouth game. He, he probably hasn't, he hasn't really featured over the last kind of eight, ten games as much. Does he have an important role going forward? Yeah, and it's very important for us. I think he's a terrific player. Obviously, had, a, had some tough time with injuries over the last eighteen months. And um, well, he had a good run of form for Sheffield United, but he missed the playoff, um, the second leg, which was unfortunate for him. Him and James McLean. A boat, boat, bring injuries into camp. To be honest, James obviously had a spell with a knee injury that ruled him out of a lot of Wigan's games. He came back and uh, played in the last game to, to win the league for Wigan, but he he pulled a toy muscle in that game, and um, so he had a great two uh, toy injury in, in that last game. So he's recovering from that at the moment, and he's he's had a scan this week, and it's good news. And he's come on and he'll come into camp on Friday, but won't hit the ground running. So we'll need a little bit of time to get ready and um, end it as well. So, uh, you know, um, obviously the injury that ruled him out the second leg, which is sort of bone bruising and, uh, and, and, and on the knee. <coughs> but he's been rehabbing at Sheffield United. He's rehabbing today. And um, <coughs> wouldn't we expect to have him fully fit for next week? <coughs> Paul and then we'll end with Adrian. Stephen, um, what level would you like to see Gavin play at next season? What level? Right. And just on Shane Duffy as well, he hasn't played since the development game. <coughs> I know he's been on the bench, but... Yeah, that, it's not been ideal for Shane. You know, I think that's uh, that's right, you know. Because the type of player he is, rhythm. You know, to get rid of playing matches is important for him. And he had a very good first half of the season with Brighton. And carry that into his international form and it's very good. Obviously, he's not been in the team, so it is a challenge for him. That's why we're bringing him in an extra day early and have organised a practice match on the Sunday. Um, and uh, he will play in that and he'll need a run in that. And um, that we'll be linking him with our, with our own 21s as well, you know, for our own 21 team on the Sunday um, with that, you know. And uh, so Shane, um, 
Shane um, is coming in. The Premier League players are in Sunday to get a week break, but Shane's coming in Saturday morning because he needs to train and he needs to play in that game on Sunday and get that one under his belt. And we need, you know, we're, we're aware of that, and uh, we need to try and get up to speed on that, you know, um, in, in, in regarding that. Um, but he, he's he's a brilliant character, and um, he gives us, he brings a lot. Obviously, scored four goals. Uh, you know, he's been scoring goals and bring, bring brings a lot to the team with our qualities. And um, you know, he'll be he, he is an important player. For, um, he is an important player for sure. Gavin, what level? Uh, this, it's a good question. I think wherever he goes, if you go and do just that, we need him to play. Whether that'll be in the championship, it has been talked the Premier League. If he's to play regularly in the Premier League, that'd be absolutely brilliant. If he's playing in the championship, um, you know, I think that's that's still a good move for where he is, how, how old he is. On, I think to play player every week uh, is it would be ideal for him. And the last question, Duffy, Steve, just bring Potter was talking about recently. He said that he tried to sit down the end of the season. Shane obviously hasn't played as much as he liked. Mm -hmm. To mention international football, he said that's all that's been back to Shane and. We'll part of the conversation. Do you have those, the, 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 I think, six of the squad around on loan, like Jeff as well? Do you have that conversation with Shane? Um, I'm not saying you need to tell him to move, but I'm not going to preempt like what Shane does in the future. Like, I think, but uh, probably like any, anyone else, you, you know, who's 30 years of age and, and when they're not a regular in the team, they, they want to go and play regularly and uh, I, I would say that's on the forefront of his mind um, but he, he's well capable of speaking for himself and you know because you know, um, yeah, he still has so much to give as a centre back over the next few years he's still a, many years ahead of him as a centre back and I'm sure many years, several years with Ireland still and um, and uh, He's a big character in the in the squad, and uh, great values in the squad. He, he earned the price very good. Okay, thanks, guys.